Hello, hello everyone and uh, a very, very good evening to all the viewers already in the chat. I hope you are doing good. I hope you are excited. Welcome to my very first uh, GT3 live workshop. So today it's not about fancy custom liveries and going creative. Today it's about how you can start creating your own setup, how you can learn what to change, uh, what to do as a beginner. And um, we will talk about the question as well. Should you even bother with getting into setups? And the short answer is already yes. And that's why tonight I have an expert because I honestly still am not an expert when it comes down to car setups and car behavior. So that's why I got some help. And tonight with me, uh, helping me doing the setup, being on stream, watching me drive and helping us to develop a, a first setup and answering all your questions is uh, Tristan, who is racing with me in Sim Racing XP. So, Everyone say hello to Tristan and Tristan, welcome to the live workshop. It's good to have you say hello to everyone. Hello chat. Thanks for having me today. So um, tell us a little bit about you. Who are you and why are you here? <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just a voice on the internet, I guess. Um, yeah. Why am I here today? I guess because I know a bit about setups. I've a been some racing for eight years now and i've been yeah basically every bigger sim i've been in r factor r factor 2 race room i racing now acc and i've been fortunate enough to win or at least win some races wherever i went so in all the sims i always had to work with the setups of course and of course it's slightly different every sim mm -hmm. and i think acc does it really well the way they do their setups there well, if, or most things actually make sense <laughs> compared to other sims. So that's yeah. why I stuck with ACC and why I'm in SRXP. And well, we'll be racing next season SRXP with you again in GT4. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, we, we have exchanged a little bit of ideas and a little bit of setups. And uh, that's how we actually came to know each other. Um, since Tristan is racing in the Sim Racing XP community with me and he, he's fast. He's, I think... If not D, he's definitely one of the fastest guys. And so far, every setup that you helped me with felt really amazing. And that's how the idea for this uh, GT3 live setup workshop uh, was born for the day. Because um, in, in all the streams and in all the races that I do, I get a lot of questions by people who are kind of confused and just, you know, looking for information. And I think even in, in some of the latest videos, I, I always like, even when I began with ACC, uh, I read about like don't bother with setups find a car that you like practice the tracks and then just go racing and I think to a certain degree that's right but um, from my perspective right now I would humbly disagree for some part I would actually say based on my experience yes you when you start out with the game don't get confused just start with a base setup uh, that you have in the game learn the tracks and find a car that you like but as soon as you want to get into like more online racing and maybe be a bit more competitive in multiplayer lobbies or get into racing leagues it is definitely a good idea to learn about just you know simple setup steps just like simple changes that can help you improve your feeling of the car because from my perspective having a car that feels better and that you can trust more enables you to be quicker and just you know do less mistakes and focus more on the track and what's going on rather than fighting the car yeah, and I, uh, I completely agree sorry for interrupting you yeah th i just wanted to say that that's why we are here and i hope you agree <laughs> yeah completely i mean i um i also agree with that statement of just drive don't worry about the setup too much when you're starting out so in the beginning you really shouldn't worry about the setup even even i don't worry about the setup when i learn a new track or a new car like when the uh, past gt um the british gt dsc came out i didn't worry about setups at first but once you're past that first step either as a beginner or as a beginner to the track setups do help you because mm. it's not real life right we we are not in the car we only have like a wheel and the screen and some audio cues that's it absolutely and and as soon as you can adjust the car to your likings that helps you that helps you get more confident that gets you um, better at focusing on what is happening and not on the car so of course you should get into setuping because simple step can already help you get like half a second maybe even a second yeah especially the thing is that 
uh, in in some on some tracks and on some leagues you have the new 2020 tire physics that uh, Kunos uh, introduced. We, we won't have them tonight. We are driving on the 2019 British GT DLC uh, BOP, but. Um, Many tracks use, for example, the new tire model and the new um, aero balance that was introduced with, I think, the 1.6 or 1.7 patch. And they did not adjust the aggressive presets in the game. And so for new players coming in right now, they might be really struggling with just the balance of the car. And it just requires like three or four clicks to like really already make the car feel much, much better to you. And, and I think, yeah, that's important. And that's what uh, we are jumping in today. And um, yeah, so we have selected uh, one of the, I think, most popular or really popular cars, which is the new um, AMG GT3 Evo from 2020 from Mercedes on the new British GT DLC track of Donington Park, also a really popular track. So we have a brand new car on a brand new track and we are starting out from zero. And that's where I'm coming in to switch my screen and activate chapter one which we do, uh, should not forget to change and um everyone in chat welcome so much i'm really happy to already have over 60 interested and excited people in the chat so feel free to ask any questions uh, moderator team is here if you have a specific question that you really are urgently wanting an answer feel free to just tag me in the chat or um uh, like for example thomas uh, van santen who is uh, one of my moderator teams right now and um so that we you know see the question pop up and uh, we will also have like a short faq session maybe in between or at the end but now we, we will start from zero so as you can see right now there is uh, no setup i show you the, the preset screen i have no setup saved nothing is done so nobody can say i cheated <laughs> and uh, we just load the aggressive preset setup and um tristan if you start with the aggressive preset would there already be anything you would suggest to um, change before you go out or would you just load it and go out and um, yeah wish good luck well depends on what you're trying to do so first thing like the first screen that we're on is already tire pressures and of course our first step are the tire pressures they're yeah they're the most important thing of the car because they connect the car to the ground and give you the grip so mm -hmm. the way it usually works is these tire pressures are kind of accustomed to around 30 degrees is what I found. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have a track right now, it's 33 degrees, so they're about right. But if you see your track on the top right is on 10 degrees, feel mm -hmm. free to increase that already because it will just save you time. Um, just a reminder, the rule of thumb is around one PS, uh, 0 0.1 PSI for 2 degrees. Mm -hmm. But we don't bother with that yet because the track is 33 degrees, so we will see what happens. Yeah, the thing um, is, um, I have my webcam screen over it. So just information for the chat, our uh, air temperature is 25, track temperature is 33, which over the course of, of the session might change a bit. But but these are like uh, our temperatures uh, right now. Yeah. But we want to think about what is our goal today. So yes. are we preparing for something? Um, yes. Because it depends, right? If you want to have like only a few uh, short sessions, only like... Uh, open lobby races that are like 20 minutes long, you adjust your fuel for that and your brakes because it doesn't make much sense to run with full fuel if you just want to race 100, well, 20 minute races, right? Yeah, exactly. So we thought about that and we guessed it would be the best thing to practice the one hour race because it's the format that, format that SRXP uses and that Boone uses mostly. Mm. So we guessed if we run a one hour race, what would we do? So we decided to go with around 100 liters. So you could select 100 liters. Yeah. Just as a guessing point, because it does make sense, right? If you want to run run one hour and then you practice with 30 liters, that doesn't make sense because the setup changes, obviously. The car changes with how much fuel you have in. Yeah, yeah, the car feels crazy different. So um, we selected the scenario of just like a one hour race because as Tristan said, it's, it's a standard format in many racing leagues, in my community races, in SRXP races and on many other communities so and yeah we always practice then with race fuel because um we want to be prepared for the race and have a feeling for the car in race and that's why we start with this scenario in today's live workshop so would there be like anything else you would change yeah, in the of course aggressive the front brakes and the rear brakes okay so i or from my experience right the front brakes one are the quickest 
together with the force, but the force are just there for testing purposes. So never use the force, never. Mm -hmm. So if you're running for an hour race, two hour race, use the brake pad one. Yeah. Be okay. Because they are usually the quickest, but they will wear down. So as we are only doing one hour race, we will select the front and rear brakes one, as they are usually the quickest around the track. Okay. And Copy that would that. be about it for now. So since the pressure should be around about for 30 degrees and we have 33 right now, let's see. I'm pretty sure you always have to change them because the aggressive preset is, is not, you know, that balanced or like for another different driving style. So now all there is to say, like, good luck and uh, head out on track and let's see how the car feels because uh, yep. new car, new track. That's going to be fun. Let's just head out and see what happens. So the first few laps, of course, is always recommended to kind of take it a bit, yeah, well, let's say more careful or a bit slower when you're not sure how the car behaves. And I have basically never really uh, driven the AMG here at Donington, except just a few laps like yesterday to kind of get an inclination of how the car feels. And it's, it's crazy how it actually feels. And especially with the colder tires, So it's completely normal to brake a bit earlier and just, you know, get a feeling for, for what happens and what the car is doing. And Tristan will be basically sitting on the passenger seat watching what I'm doing. <laughs> exactly. I hope you fastened your seatbelt because there are no airbags. <laughs> so I've seen a good question, one that I had to think about, um, was from David, who asked, why do we set up the car with 100 liters and not something between to mm -hmm. like the usual load and first off we kind of do that because one hour with the mercedes you will run like 110 to 115 liters and we do that because we will lose well some fuel over the course of practicing and i want to have the liters well in the extreme scenario or more extreme scenario and then later once you find like a few setup adjustments that work for you then you can still tone it down but that's down to your preference. If you prefer to run with 60 liters and then increase that once you have a good setup to 100 liters and check if it's still working, that's up for you. That's just personal preference, I guess. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, the thing that most people that are just either training in hot lap mode or um, are just starting out with like racing in uh, one hour races is that the car behavior changes uh, across the time of like an hour you know you consume fuel you consume tires and um, yeah the car behavior just changes exactly john has asked a well i would say a really advanced question regarding adjusting brake bias per turn and oh, that's mm. not something that i really do in the formation of well setup finding I mean, I do it for a lap <clears throat> and change it by a lap and well, see what works. But I only use the brake bias dynamic changing to get the last thousands, hundreds of a second out of every lap. So that's not really something that you do during well setup testing. That's something that you find for yourself when you're really pushing it. That's actually a really advanced uh, technique already that um, you could, for example, see in like the 24 hour spa race that um, or the 24-hour Silverstone race, or was it 12-hour that was streamed, and that some of the drivers were really adjusting uh, brake bias by uh, section, actually. So the thing with the new AMG Evo is it really feels very, very, how to say, se sensitive? <laughs> so it's like, it feels already pretty much on the edge. Okay, there, I think... there's been... Sorry. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. There's been another question. Is there a universal setup or has every track an exclusive one? And I would say pretty much every track should have an exclusive one as every car is even different on every track as there, as there are different BOPs. So BOP means balance of performance and the cars are adjusted by the game for different race tracks. So... Um, if we would drive this car now, not on Donington, 
but on, let's say, Bathurst, which is a completely different track, it would have a different, well, different BOP. The car would be different by default by the game. So even if we would run with the same settings as here on Donington, the car would be still different on Bathurst. And then, of course, every track is different. Every track has different challenges for the car. So, let's say you were here in Boone's Shoes and we would now create a really good setup for this track. On similar tracks to Donington, it might work. And it might be better than the standard setup because, well, it kind of works for you, we've created it for you, it's, well, it sticks to you, it's good for you. But it still won't be good on every track. So still find all the adjustments that you need to do for that specific track. Let's say for Monza, for example, you want lower downforce than here. So yeah, specific setup for every track. Yep, absolutely. Um, it's actually a good point that you say that some setups or some bases might help you. It's like, for example, I saw a lot of people like taking um, Silverstone bases for uh, Donington, which uh, seem to kind of work out. So you, if you find tracks that have similarities, you can definitely um, start um, you know, at, at a point and work yourself from there and just have a nice, nice base. Interesting question. Is there something that you would change at 90% of the tracks? Like tire pressures, A or B, arrow. Um, and I think you really yeah, counted the most important ones. So going in, the first thing you do is always tire pressures. You're always aiming for those 27.6, 27.5 PSI in the dry conditions. That's the first thing you do, and that's what also gives you a lot of time. Like, correct tire pressures makes up a second. When you're going, like, below it, if you're at 26 PSI, you're losing a second per lap. Just because you're not on tire pressures. And then, Absolutely, the first yeah. adjustments that we will probably also do today, because that's that will be our second point, first uh, balance adjustments, is for me personally, always arrow, and in some cases, the ARBs. So yeah, you already counted those ones. And then we will go deeper, we will go with other things like dampers. Like maybe bump stops, not on the Merc, bump stops don't do much here, but in general bump stops. Those are advanced things that you can do to shave off, shave off like the last second, half second. And yeah, we will go down um, through the setup screen and say like, what is low downforce, what is the stiff suspension? For sure we will do that. Right, Boon? Yeah, absolutely. So, from like the first few laps I do is that I have really massive um, oversteering nearly out of every corner. That means that as soon as I hit the throttle, the rear end just wants to step out and some of the people watching me drive might have seen me massively correcting on the steering wheel, which on the one hand either means that my right foot is just too heavy or mm -hmm. um, the car is just yeah, like here right now again. Yeah, yeah, same. Um, question, will you cover MoTeC? Um, we are not quite sure about it, as we don't want to go for too long today, like two or three hours at maximum. We will see how far we go. Um, so? But at one point, I'm sure we will cover MoTeC. Like if we can't do it today, then we will cover it, cover it maybe another day. If I'm good enough for Boone and he wants to work with me again, <laughs> I'm sure. I just wanted to say absolutely because like today's session is more focused towards the beginners getting into like uh, adapting the first things and let's see how far we go but I would definitely want to do a second part where we then build up and go deeper and start analyzing in Motic and also teach people about that because that's really a question that often pops up and Motic is something that I for myself haven't really used so far because it's, it can be a really overwhelming topic for you question from rubbish racer um working with springs and dampers what would be a default starting point to then increase or decrease in an experiment and i would say usually the acc setups are pretty good they're pretty good in what they do with the springs and the dampers so if you're not really sure where to start just use well the standard setup with a starting point so basically the steps are first off drive out with the aggressive preset how are the tire pressures you can't really tell from the car how it is before you have the right tire pressures. Then once you have those, you start experimenting. Okay, wh where does my car lag? Is it oversteery, understeery? What can I do? And once you have the general balance, then you can start thinking about, 
well, should I stiffen my springs? Should I soften them? What would work here for me? I saw one of the questions was, will the stream stay on YouTube? Yes, it will and will also be completed with the timestamp chapters that we are doing right now. Dark asked, what is the first thing that you look at in correcting understeer and oversteer? What is it for you, Boone? Um, most of the time it's the right height and the anti-roll bars. If you make a car too stiff or too soft, or like change the arrow balance from more t from the rear to the front or the other way around, actually, I would say. Yep, I would agree. First thing to change would be arrow balance, then ARB, and I also like to use um, the differential preload that changes a lot, and the rear toe. Woohoo! So, one thing I read about a lot actually and also noticed myself is that the AMG really is a car where you need to use trail braking and be careful with your throttle. Because if you just basically stomp the brakes and then push the accelerator, you get a lot of, uh, how to say, imbalance into the car and uh, it doesn't really like that. <laughs> yeah, well, on the brake, I hadn't that many issues, but on the throttle, you need to be cautious, cautious yeah. with it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm basically drifting out of every corner if I'm not really paying attention and that just costs you too much time, actually. Desi asked an interesting question regarding tire pressures. Um, they pointed out that the tire pressures de should decrease when the tank is empty. And for most cars, that's absolutely the case. And for that, you always have to take the compromise. There's never a an optimal choice, right? So nope. the way I usually do it, I overpressure the tires a bit, go to like 27.8, 27.9, and then watch them decrease as the race goes on. Because, um, yeah, you don't want to be un or in an unoptimal state at any time. But rule of thumb is, it's always worse to be under pressured than to be over pressured. I mean, it gets worse, obviously, but 28.1, 28.2, you lose time, but not that much. Way more than if you would go to 26A, 26.7. Absolutely, yes. There's nothing worse than under pressure tires. And you were actually right, the tire pressures look, well, okay ish. We need to increase yeah. by probably two clicks or something. They are a bit too low. Yeah, yeah. tiny bit. Okay, question um, What is your favorite racetrack, Boon? Oh boy, <laughs> I really enjoy Kyalami. Okay. Actually, what I don't know. It? I don't know why it it kind of clicked for me the first time I went on it, and I really enjoy the flow of the racetrack. For me, my favorite racetrack is either the Hungaroring or this track Donington. Yeah, I mean, I like many tracks. Uh, also, Mount Panorama, honestly, awesome track. I love it. Okay. There are many questions coming in. Nice. Um, <laughs> Maybe we need to write some down. <laughs> Porsche 911 GT3. Um, it's well, <laughs> it's the car. First off, it's the car. The car spins. That's what the car does. It is rear-engined with a very short wheelbase, so the car is very agile, which is a pro, but also very well easy to spin. <laughs> so. You really need to be able to drive this kind of driving style. You need to be cautious with it and kind of run with it. So you can do stuff um, at the setup. Yeah, see, it's not only the Porsche that is a death trap. <laughs> <laughs> when you start pushing it. But that's kind of the thing that the Porsche is known for, that it's a bit of a death trap. And yeah, don't worry about it. Maybe other cars are better for you. I wouldn't recommend starting out with the Porsche GT3 if you're new to ACC. Um, Maybe come back to it once you figured out some things, how ACC handles in general. Yeah, and I would not say yeah. the Porsche. The Porsche is definitely not a beginner car, actually. It's a really tricky one. Um, so, okay, tire pressures. I just now they are a bit screwed because of my nice spinnerino. So I just yeah. up them everywhere by two clicks. But I think this is something mm -hmm. in general, tire pressures, you should always have an eye on. With every change you make to the car, especially here, maybe with the toe, with the camber, or with the balance, or whatever, it can influence tire pressure. So always keep an eye on tire pressures. I think that's like the most important lesson in, in, in the first step, right? 
Um, yeah, typers are always the first step. One thing that I'm worried about is you see like uh, these OMI or IMO temperatures. Yeah. Um, and we are at almost 100 degrees. Well, this, this one was from spinning right now. Yeah, I know, but the but front left, the left is left, always yeah. a bit too high. So what you want to aim for is around 90 degrees, 80 to 90. I mean, it's a bit too high and these tires are made to work even if they're a bit too, well, too hot. So what does what would... IMO actually mean or what do you need to look out for here? Just for every... O OMI means outer, middle, inner. So because the tires are cambered to the inside in the racing car, that means that the inner side is always hotter or should always be hotter than the outside. And the rule mm -hmm. of thumb is the tire temperature should be between 7 to 5 degrees of a temperature difference regarding... Well, that, that regards whether you want to do a quality lap, then it's more like 7 degrees. Or if you want to do a one-hour race where the tires need to last for longer, then you're kind of looking more towards 5 degrees of temperature difference. Mm -hmm. So and... I've seen your front left always got a bit too hot. So what do yeah. we do against that, Boon? Do you know? What do we do against that? We can, I mean, since uh, tires and brakes and everything works together, one thing you could do is play with the brake ducts in the aero balance to get more fresh yeah. air. And yeah, the other thing the is adjusting the camber to maybe balance the temperatures. But mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if we see that the tires get too hot to like 100 degrees, we would actually say, okay, open up the brake ducts to like five. Yeah. So I would increase the brake ducts at the front by one click. Okay. But what that then does is the tires will get, well, cooler. So that means less pressure. So I would add like 0 0.3 PSI more at the front because the tires will be cooler now with more cooling. So we need more pressure in them. Okay. So just um, a, a short explanation for everyone because I know that was really quick. The reason why that is is because as you see here in the setup screen, the brake ducts uh, manage the ventilation, how much fresh air you get to your brakes. And the reason why you can adjust tire temperatures with that is, as you see in the graph here, is like the air gets sucked into the, the brake ducts and the air then spins within the rim and actually heats up not only the brakes, but also the rim. And then the heat, of course, dissipates through the tire on top and uh, outside here. So by managing the brake ducts and opening them up to have more fresh air, you can cool the brakes better, which means you have less hot air inside the rim and inside the wheel. And that also influences tire temperatures. That's very important to know, for example, when you have like temperatures that are 10 degrees or 15 degrees, where you cannot get the brakes and your tires up to temperature, you would then close down, decrease the number uh, from the brake ducts to retain more heat in, in the, the brake rim and, and the tire. So yeah, and that's what we just did is because the front tires get way too hot, we open up the brake ducts to like balance the temperatures a bit more. Okay. Then drive out and see how it dries while I answer some more questions. <laughs> that's nice. We have a lot of questions and it just shows that how important and uh, how interesting uh, setup work is. And if you just, you know, do a pit stop and drive out now, would you go out with a fresh tire set <clears throat> or with the same one that we just used? Interesting question, also very advanced question is, <laughs> is there a certain distance race that you adjust the engine mapping and what is the deciding factor to make such changes? Yeah. Um, so, first <clears throat> off, should I go out on fresh tires or on the same tire yeah, set? Do fresh tires. Okay. Good. Go, go uh, on. <laughs> um, first off, don't do it on every car and don't do it if you're starting out. Um, for most cars, just stay with the highest engine mapping and you will be fine. Um, the Evo that Boone is driving now is very fuel thirsty. Oh, Let's yeah. say you need to do a 65 minute stint on map one. That's not going to be possible, even with the maximum allowed fuel. So at some point you will need to, well, start consuming less, right? And you can do that by shifting earlier or by changing the engine map. And on some cars like the Ferrari, for example, the standard engine map is map three because map one is more aggressive on the on the throttle. So it doesn't have more power. It's just that when you're at 50% throttle um, or at your pedal, it will give the command to the engine to apply more throttle or to apply more power. 
than on map 3 for example. It's just yeah. called aggressive or less aggressive engine mapping throttle shape mapping. Because basically the shape of the graph of the throttle is being changed. It's a very advanced technique. If you're studying out in ACCOR, well, in a medium experience position, don't bother with it. There, there's not really a need to. The only thing you need to do is, if it starts raining, <laughs> be aware what your engine map for the rain is, because that really helps you. But apart from that, um, you don't really need to bother with it. It is only a really slight difference also, that only changes like a tenth per lap at maximum. Um, what makes a car like the Porsche 911 GT3 so hard to control compared to others? It has a really short wheelbase and the engine sits at the rear. So it's rear engine, not mid engine. And it's the only car in ACC um, that is rear engine, the Porsches. Um, so yeah, that's what makes it harder to control. That's right, actually every car in ACC is either front or mid engine. The Porsche is the only car that is really truly rear engined. Um, regarding BOP changes per track, um, cars don't have a different power band on different tracks. That's what stays the same. But they could have different weight or different peak power. That is what can change. Okay, when testing a new setup, what percentage do you drive, the, uh, drive at? At what kind of pace? I would say 100% is not really achievable in the beginning because in the beginning you will either go above 100% and well slide and lose time that way or be too slow. You, the more you practice the closer you will get to these 100% because you will learn more about the car, about the corners. So when well creating a setup I'm not going full 100% I'm going at like 95% because I want to know how the car handles and not spin out every lap and to even get to the point where you can manage your driving skill level is already pretty advanced <laughs> my problem on every track is that the inner temp of the tires is every time higher than the outer temp how can I fix that don't fix that that's perfect that's how you want it to be I could go really in depth into car mechanics why it's better to be like that but it should be like that just be mindful that the inner tire is not too far different from the outer tire. So what you are aiming for, as I said, is 5 degrees to 7 degrees of a difference between the outer and the inner tire. So the fun thing is actually that on some turns it feels like it's a bit understeering. But on the exit, it's massively oversteering. Oversteering at the exits? Yeah, most of the exits it's oversteering, and on some turn ins, it feels like it's understeering. Mm, I had the same when I drove that car. And uh, through the chicane is horrible. I tried okay. to keep the steering wheel straight, but nevertheless, it just. I think that's just a weight transfer. Mm -hmm. But, but um, what I see is that your tire pressures are not there yet. Still so, not there yet, yeah. And we didn't yeah, even so change the rear brake ducts, interesting. Uh, so right now you're 0 0.5 of, of what the optimum is. And you can still, still now you cannot guess what the car is like in optimum temperatures. Yeah. So what I would say is get in again, increase the tire pressures by 0 0.5 on every tire. I think the left rear needs even more, look at that. Yeah, maybe 6 at the rear left and then drive out again um five kicks, Assetto Corsa or base Assetto Corsa Assetto Corsa one question the front tires are always very cold yeah that's an AC thingy I had that too when I drove AC um and why am I slower like why am I only driving 24.5 at brands and that can have many many um, reasons even as you say um, off so if you use free cars and you have the same time but it's slower than what you want it to be um, look at your driving look at how you drive the track it could be possible that you're not using all the track that is there so like leave a gap to the edge of the track on the entry or the exit um, could be braking points could be many many things 
Yeah, and that's actually one very important aspect for um, not, not only beginners, but um, one thing that I barely forgot about and ignored in the beginning is I did not check my own replays. And when you're learning a track and want to see how much you're using of the track, always check your own replays and see how much you're using of the track and, you know, where you are losing out and where you can improve. So I think that that's one of the biggest learning outcomes when you're starting into a simulation game like this. Is the Porsche GT4 also re-engined? No, GT4 Porsche is mid-engined. Can you adjust the gears in ACC? Nope. ACC has a balance of performance of the cars and also in real life the car manufacturers or the racing teams are not allowed to change the gearing of the cars as they are part of the BOP. And that's why then some cars maybe feel really strange like the BMW GT4 with his gearing is um, really interesting. <laughs> Is coasting through corners a good way to learn? Or should we focus more on max braking and getting on the throttle immediately? Well, that's in a very beginning. complex question. That's not something that can really answer in extremes. I think in the beginning, I can only talk from my experience, it's better to get with the... or most of the time it's better to go with the slow in, fast out. And as a beginner, that means that when you learn a track and you learn a car, you brake and then you coast. You will have an easier time because if you just learn, well, if, if you have no idea about trail braking and, and um, all that stuff, it's like you will just um, get into so much troubles and be frustrated because you will constantly over push the car. So if you're just starting out, go with the braking, coast into the corner and um, accelerate out of that approach actually is what, what I would recommend do in the beginning. Yeah. And the more you practice, the less you should coast. Because in a race car, whenever you coast, you lose time. Basically, in a race car, you always want to be on the brake or the throttle by at least a bit. But that because is also, well, advanced technique. Yeah, and the thing is, it's not only about speed. It's also about stabilizing the car. Because if you let a car coast, um, it, it's, it's not as stable as if you just, you know, put in a little bit of throttle or you know, a little bit of braking because it just tightens and straightens the car and helps it stabilize. At the, at the limit, that is exactly. I mean, in the beginning, if you're going slower, it, it's not as much of a problem as when you go to the limit and try to squeeze out the last few tenths, then you, of course, need to, like, stabilize the car at any point and don't want to lose time. Okay, I Good. think... What would you rather get, racing gloves or boots? Well, I got racing gloves and I'm now thinking about getting boots because driving in socks kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm the kind of driver that uh, drives barefooted, actually. Oh, really? I, I just feel like I have the most grip that way <laughs> and the well, best control. <laughs> are your feet not starting to like hurt your skin no. or something? No, no okay. not at all. <laughs> Interesting. But uh, I might just be different. And racing what? gloves. Yes, and there you so, go again. <laughs> that's the second time I lose the car in the corner when I uh, touch mm -hmm. the grass. How much do you think is your understanding of the track right now? Do you want to get into what we prepared? Because now you were at the right tire pressures. Uh, I think yes. So. Okay, then show the people. The magic axle sheet, you mean? Mm-hmm. It's right there. Badoom. People Ooh, see it? Just teeth. And change the chapter. Chapter 2. It's all about <laughs> the track map. So we yeah. prepared something together. Like you... I don't know, Tristan. Would you would you say you do that every time? Or would you recommend it for people, especially just starting with setups? I mean, it might be a good idea when you I, learn a track to take notes what happens, right? Yeah, kind of. I don't do that every race. I kind of do it in my head. So, like, okay. I identify problem corners, and for those corners, I absolutely do it. But as a beginner, um, it absolutely makes sense to do this. Like, it's really easy to set up. <laughs> it's, it takes a bit of time to make it as aesthetically <laughs> pleasing as we did it right here. But it's really easy, and I could explain it to the guys right now. Yeah. So basically, what you see is a map of the track, obviously. It's Donington. Hello. <laughs> and we wrote down all the corners and well all the corners are split into three parts the entry of the corner the middle of the corner and the exit of the corner because 
um, for example, when people ask me, oh, my car oversteers, what do I do? Then I can just say, it's not that simple, guys. It's really not that simple. I can't just say, you understeer or oversteer, and that's the fix. Because oversteer and understeer can stem from so many different factors. Entry or exit, or the middle of the corner. Is it a slow corner, a quick one? And all these factors come in there. So what Boon did is he kind of made a map of this track in his mind and well, kind of thought about where the issues are. So do you want to tell us what did corner one, T1, feel like? Um, I guess I'm not, uh, well, uh, let's, let's talk from a perspective of, of a beginner right now, because honestly, I have not really been pushing because the car feels so on edge right now. So uh, T1 actually felt good, um, but I was way far off from the potential, uh, I can't talk, <laughs> I was far off the, the, the potential there, but um, it felt actually good on turning, on breaking in, and I think on corner exit was just a, you know, slight uh, oversteering. Yep. Let me just put in what I saw, saw from you. So oh, the okay. O's stand for oversteer, as is obvious. Um, U stands for understeer, so when the car does not turn enough. And B stands for balance, so we are happy with it. Yeah. Those are the kind of parts that I really saw. Is there anything else that you... Um, people people might notice that some turns are standing alone, some turns are combined together. And that's, for example, because what I learned when starting with the game and, and learning racetracks is racetracks are not a, a, a combination of just corners. You basically want to find the best way <clears throat> and the fastest way through every corner. And some corners are sections, meaning like from from after t1 when you go downhill i would say t2 to t3 into t4 is a whole section that you want to find the fastest line through and that's why for example i put t2 and t3 together because there's just no braking zone it's just full throttle um and then t4 again is the first a uh, braking zone and yeah i i felt the car on t4 which is uh, pretty quick actually on turn in very um unstable mm -hmm. actually yeah i have the same and i know why it happens Okay, that's great. And uh, a corner exit, I think it was fine because it's pretty quick one actually. And then we had yeah. up five, six, and then the same was actually into seven. Very, very unstable, not really trusting the car, which is the seven is actually a tighter version of number four. And yeah. then when you go outside uphill, uh, massive oversteering, of course, when I hit the grass, I spin, but again, it felt very, very uh, unstable and, and oversteering on, on, on throttle. Then we had the uphill section for everyone to follow into the right. And that actually felt good. That's basically the only corner that feels good. And um, if I keep a tighter line and I'm careful with the throttle, there is actually, interestingly, no oversteering. It just so happens. So should I put it to a B instead of an O? It, yeah, it was. It, it felt really good, actually, in the beginning. Maybe let's see what, what, what happens when we change stuff. And then we had the long straight. And then the chicane feels good on braking but then going through the chicane mm, yeah the, the complete yeah imbalance yeah. and oversteering and then we have the melbourne hairpin feels good on entry massive oversteer on the exit i i really have to wait a long time until i can push and uh, t12 is the same if maybe a tiny bit of understeer but that's i think just because i didn't have a good line so it's also um, because the corner is bank to the outside so we also have less grip there every yeah. time we drive it yeah so okay that gives us a pretty good picture of what we need to work on so pretty much every exit is oversteery yeah but it's mainly the slower corners also two quick questions um are the dogs available for us uh, there's not really a need to make them available you see everything I mean, that we do here and it's just one... for boon for his stream this one is public i can link it in the description that's no problem if the people want to have a template to use so yeah sure there, there's no secret to it i can share this one in the in the stream description afterwards and what was the second question um or not really a question um paul said that um some people recommend using one to five for understeer to oversteer to gauge how big the effect is mm. but i guess for our purposes today and for the beginner it's okay to start with oversteer understeer. It's already tough enough to really feel the oversteer understeer, especially <clears throat> in the entry or the exit, like really 
splitting up these corners in your mind can be difficult enough. Yeah, yeah, and oh, yeah. As Thomas just stated, we have a massive amount of viewers today, uh, which is which is a premiere. Over 150 people watching right now. So, welcome to the community. Bunatics is all about uh, for beginners and enthusiasts. And uh, if you have not done so far, I would really appreciate it. Just hit the subscribe button because there is more like this coming. We will have more live workshops, more tutorials. So the channel is all about growing uh, and learning together, beginners and enthusiasts, and and share all our knowledge. So I'm really happy to have you all uh, on the stream, and I hope you enjoyed. The show and yes we continue with chapter two which is uh the track map and um i think we we are done with this right now is there anything you would yeah. kind of i mean step two and step three is always something that you like cycle around always repeat so now we've done the track map we've analyzed how the car feels now we can go to step three and do okay. our first balance adjustments activating step three da -da -da first balance adjustment so now it gets exciting so after we've done a few laps we adjusted tire pressures uh we noted down what's happening with the car and what the impressions is and what tristan saw while uh, i was trying to tame the german beast which is i really have to say I, I honestly i really love how the car looks and how it sounds and how actually it drives but i just can't get it to do what i want and i hope we can solve that tonight <laughs> I just want to point out that now that we've done step one and step two, we are not done with them. Like these are always steps that you repeat. So Absolutely. Let's say let's say we change something about the setup, and now the rear tires um, are used less, so that they have less temperature, and with less temperature it comes less pressure. So you need to repeat that again, and then if you want to point out what car area, what corners do need improvement. You repeat step two you make that or yeah you, you make a few laps you put these o u and b's into the track map and then you find out what needs changing and now we can do step three <laughs> after 45 minutes we can finally do our first real balance adjustments <laughs> and that's just because we have so many questions and it's really cool to see actually and and, and just a short question stacy yes sim racing absolutely exploded and actually the, the 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 lockdown and the pandemic is actually the reason why I'm sitting here. I just got into sim racing shortly before that when all that happened, and yeah, I think uh, the, one of the positive few positive outcomes of Corona is actually that sim racing community is growing and gets more attention and so many more awesome people. So okay, let's uh, let's tame the German beast. Yep. So I'm just gonna go through my thoughts. Mm -hmm. How do we? So we have a car that is really oversteery, but mainly on exits, because yeah. mostly the entry middle is fine. And if we had a car that would be oversteery pretty much everywhere, I would go to arrow because arrow affects pretty much everything: entry, middle, and exit. Mm -hmm. That is not really the case right now. So we have like these exit situations, and there's like three things I would point out to change that. First yeah. off, we have the rear toe that really helps with doing the first, well, adjustments when you exit the corner. The rear toe kind of changes actually, how much oversteer or, or understeer you have once you like pick so up the throttle. Just for the fears, the rear toe, which is now a positive 0 0.1 degrees, means that if you look from top of the car, the, the tires basically point a little bit to the inside right it's like an a shape yeah right now they point to the inside exactly yes so positive rear toe means that if you look on top of the car instead of like having like straight tires they are like this and that's okay what we are going to change first because this has an influence on how the car behaves through the corner Sorry, um, I thought you would. Um, it does actually change it. So if you have more rear toe, and I would say we increase the rear toe now, you will have more understeer, like especially at the exit of the okay. corner, but also a bit everywhere. Because but you I increase, would... you make the shape of the A even stronger. Okay. Yeah, they point so more to the inside. So I would no increase them by maybe two clicks. So from 0 0.1 to 0 0.12. Mm-hmm. But what that actually means is, haha, and I know that is, I mean, it's probably not that much, but the more you actually increase the angle, the more the tires will uh, 
rubber across well there will be more resistance uh, when they go yeah. over roll over the tarmac it's really tricky yeah. to explain that in english so <laughs> it is keep looking at the tire temperatures and tire pressures because you will have more friction friction is the word i was looking for <laughs> um yeah so you have more friction tires will be a bit hotter you will be a bit slow on the straight but these effects only marginal yeah um so that's toe and as someone pointed out no we explained toe we didn't expect camber camber is how the tire sits on the track let's say um well, like it looks from the top same. to bottom yeah and if you camber look... is like in the direction of the car yeah yeah camber is actually like the same if you look from the rear or the front of the car you also have like an a shape <laughs> yeah. and toe is just from top if you look on top of the car it's basically the same so the negative camber that we have means the tires are on the top point to the inside which is always why the the inside of the tire gets uh, hotter because it's the one that has the most friction to the tarmac but uh, yeah so we changed the toe anything else you would change in the yeah. first step one thing that we didn't do um was adjust the camber and mm -hmm. from what we can see we have a bit too much at the rear by like one or two yeah let's say one click so and the front has a, has more uh, too much so it's more like two clicks less okay because it's yet these omi temperatures we are at around six to seven at the front at the rear we are at six yeah and at the rear we want to be like five and at the front we want to be like five to six degrees because obviously we are aiming for a one hour race as stated before we want these tires to last yeah absolutely so these small changes don't do that much but what i will get into now is mechanical grip is the arbs yay anti-roll bars yeah, what are like anti-roll these, bars <laughs> these are kind of <laughs> these are <laughs> fuck these are <laughs> things that connect like both tires of the car together yeah so yeah. and the higher the number the stiffer they are so more the tires are locked together and the less the car like wobbles through the corner has less leaning through the corner yeah it's actually you the the um if you increase the value of the anti-roll bar means you stiffen the the anti-roll bar and that means you make the connection of both left and right tires stiffer and that means you the, the car will have less flex when going through a corner and uh, it, it can be that if a car is too stiff you just have constant oversteer or um, yeah, struggling with, with the weight balance of the car when you go through a corner. Um, exactly. So basically, is the way I'm going to say it is if you increase the front or decrease the rear anti-rubber, you will get more understeer. Or if you decrease the front or increase the rear, you will get more oversteer. But how mm -hmm. do you decide what to change <laughs> if you want to do the front or the rear? And that's not always that obvious. Mm -hmm. um, you really Sometimes you can just try it out and see what's better. I mean, that's always the easiest method. But in the rule of thumb is you want to change what is broken. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I've had with the Merc was that the rear kind of leaned too much. So if we would make it even softer, the car would lean even more at the rear and also we have that yeah. one corner that uh, t4 where we have oversteer into the corner and the front anti rubber would make the front well would obviously make it stiffer but would make it lean less and maybe we have less oversteer into that corner which would also be a beneficial change yeah so just uh, quickly in between because I've, i saw someone try to post like a link for a setup guide I think I know which guide you mean and I linked the guide in my Discord. My Discord has a setup channel where the guides and all the helpful graphics of all the stuff, what it means and what is going on um, is in there. So jump into my Discord and check it out if you need it. <laughs> I'm sorry, my YouTube chat is uh, deleting uh, links. Okay. So we put the front and the robot to five, I would say. The front, yes. To make yes, it front. stiffer in the front to counter a bit of the maybe unintentional oversteering. Mm -hmm. So usually I would tell you guys to only change one or two things at a time. But exactly. as we are as we are kind of bound to a time limit, we are doing more changes now at once. Um, because I would recommend increasing the preload of the differential by one or two clicks. You would increase um, the preload? Increase the preload. Because what it does is it locks the tires more together. 
Mm -hmm. So if you break, you will have more understeer. And if you go into the throttle in slower corners, you will also experience a bit more understeer. At least that is my experience. I know there okay. are many kind of different ideologies when it comes to preload and diff, but that is what I found. Yes, um, I, it, most of the time that if you increase the preload, um, you get more and more oversteer out of the corner, was my impression actually, but maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, my kind of interpretation of that changed a lot through the times, and right now that is what I feel like is okay. good well, if you have a bit of too much oversteer. What the questions uh, we have? Oh uh, God! What is preload? What, what does the preload <laughs> mean? Basically, actually? the way I can explain it the best and the easiest, and it's not going to be one hundred percent correct, but it is what helps you the most, is how well the tires are locked together. So if we go at the maximum amount, the tires will be forced by the car to be at a similar speed. And if we go to a low amount, the cars will be able to rotate more freely. Yes, and the reason I can jump in here is because if you turn in a car, the outside tire wants to rotate quicker than the inside tire. And if you increase the preload, that means the outside tire cannot run as freely as it maybe yeah. needs to do. And if you compare it, for example, because I just saw like a video about it with a drift car, they completely fully lock their, their differential. So there is no um, preload, so to say, they just um, smash it together so that both rear tires spin at the same speed because they need the full control when drifting. But since we don't want to drift, we, we want the rear tires to be able to rotate at a different kind of speeds. And that's what the preload does. It actually hinders or like it puts more resistance on the rear tires to rotate at different speeds and locks them more together to rotate at more speeds. But but that can make the car um, yeah, more nervous when going yeah. through and accelerating out of corners. One more thing what I want to add is uh, usually less preload means more um, oversteer during the corner, but less oversteer at the exit. <clears throat> but if it is too low and if you have not enough grip, then you're also going to have oversteer. And my impression of this car right now is it doesn't have enough grip to have that low um, preload. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because um, basically when the tires are locked together more, um, you're going to have more grip, but it's going to be a bit more oversteery. But as we don't have enough grip right now, and I think that is what hinders us right now, I'm going to say let's increase it. So okay. that is really more of a medium to advanced technique. If you're a beginner, don't really use that too much, except for try it out. Like, just drive it. <laughs> yeah. What's stopping there, you? Just, you? You, you can't yeah. damage anything. And the thing is, if it doesn't work, you go back. And uh, we come to an important point, which is saving. Always save with a version, <laughs> like version one. And um, I think the, the track temperature, right? So 32 right now. So that's how... I'm just going to think this is going to work well with our anti-robot change and our toe change. And I think this is a nice addition. Okay. So you would say that's enough right now and I need to go do some yeah. driving? That's probably already too much for one setup step. Like we changed three things four things at the same time and that's too much if something went really bad now really poorly then sometimes you can't really well know what is causing that issue right now yeah so only change like two things max so and as i said right now we're not doing that because we don't have all the time in the world for the stream today and want to give as much information to you as possible since i'm the guinea pig uh nothing to worry about <laughs> But in the meantime, we have time actually for more questions or comments in the chat. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna scroll up a bit and see if I find some that are not regarding preload now, as I've explained <laughs> that part as well as I can. I'm not a car mechanic, so yeah. But I think we, we did a pretty good explanation actually. Yeah, one question that I couldn't really answer because we glanced over it. How do you change RG road in relation to suspension? And basically, my rule of thumb is um, decided by what corner the issue is happening. So right now we had issues at slower speed corners and anti-robots are mainly influencing slower speed corners. While the springs are influencing slower, medium and high speed, but mostly medium speed corners. So as we had this issue right now, on slower speed we changed the ARB. If we had that issue on a quicker turn, we might have gone towards that spring change.
So tires are cold. Always remember that in the first laps you have to get tires on temperatures. Do preload and traction control work independently? Well, yeah, they are different systems. So preload is the differential, is the mechanical part that locks the tires together. The TC is a software in your car that stops your engine from, well, giving you the power or, or transmitting the power to the tires. So if the car detects, oh, we are having too much oversteer or we are going to spin, the car is gonna direct less power to the tires, regardless of what your throttle input is. Funny question, how do I not lose the car or crash the car at the quick corner after the long straight of Pori car? And I'm just <laughs> gonna say, practice. <laughs> just because send it. That's not an easy way to solve. We don't know the car, we don't know the issue exactly. Just practice, just try the corner of different speeds, try a bit slower, maybe increase the wing a bit or play with the springs and just find out what works for you. Sometimes it's also the balance of when do you turn in and when do you brake. Do you turn in before you brake? Do you turn in after you brake or during you brake? That can make a lot of difference actually, as, um, I found out in our endurance race at Snetterton. Oh, what's like your, your take on this, Tristan? Yeah, so basically when you brake, in a high-speed corner, your front dips lower. And as you see also in your arrow settings, when you decrease the front right height, you're gonna have more oversteer. Yeah. So sometimes it's better to brake a bit less or brake a bit earlier, so you don't have that oversteer, because that's what also happening a bit at that T4 that we are seeing right now. It's better now if the anti-robot change, at least looks like it, but that's why that corner was oversteery in the beginning. So another fix for this corner would have been increase the front right height by one click so the car doesn't dip that low. Oh my god, that was my mistake. Issues. Bad driving boon, bad driving. This is one to continue a bit because that was just not enough. Every car has a different setup. Just because the setup is working on the Merc for example, doesn't mean you can translate it to the Porsche. No, absolutely because not. Because every car is 100% different. But that theory is what can be translated. And that's what, exactly. we, what we are trying to learn. <laughs> so let's see. If there is another level or if I destroyed the tires now. That's also the reason Chris asked why are setups of different cars so different? Because every car is vastly different. Has also very different, let's say, ideologies or ideas of how that car works. The Merc, for example, is designed to be nice on curbs and bumps and has like bump stops very far out. Why other cars like the Ferrari are very stiff and try to generate that time through that, through stiff bump stops. So just all in car ideology and car ideas of how you want it to turn. For example, in F1 you have very different ideas of how a car is supposed to be quick as well. And it's the same here, but more extreme, because they are not bound by one formula. We have cars with front engine, mid engine, rear engine. Very long wheelbase, very short wheelbases. They are all so different. Yeah. I don't know if I screwed up my tires, but right now it's not really balanced, but... <laughs> it still feels so on edge through the chicane there. But that was actually a nice exit, no power oversteer. Yep, these tips also apply to PS4 and Xbox. Because the game is usually 
Or maybe although, the same. although the physics is a tiny bit different and the lap times seem to be quicker on PlayStation, it's the uh, same theory, yeah. I didn't even know that, wow. Yeah, yeah, you have to like Google some of the PlayStation lap times. Insane. So, still see? Yeah, did, yeah, wow. I see that. That was like an unintentional turn in oversteer par excellence, and I think now my tires are screwed. <laughs> Do you have enough information to go back in? Yeah. Okay. Still tricky. Still, still, yep. So it already felt different, but um, it seemed like. Yeah. Uh, it's just that. Is it just that corner or is it everywhere? The chicane was still very, very imbalanced, and um, this corner, especially now, still the unwanted like turn in oversteer. It feels like the moment I let loose of the brake, the car starts to oversteer on turn in. On and turn in, was, you have oversteer. So, that what, was could the... that, what could cause that? Ha, huh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so we have different ideas what so, could be done here. But what I think happens is you brake and your front dips down. Yeah. The Merc is really soft in terms of bump stop. So it really allows you to dip up and down, up and down. That's how this car works. So what we can do to change that or to help with that is we increase the front right height. Okay. So increase it by one click and you will see that uh, like the percentage at the bottom increases by increase or decreases? It went from minus 0 0.5, 0 .5 to minus to 1. Like. 0 0.9, which means yeah. more understeer. Understeer. But okay. that's a really, really big change. So, what I would maybe do is now either increase the rear right height or increase the front splitter by 1. Now it's what 0 .8. Do want to do? I increase the front splitter. So the front splitter is what we call, well, arrow in per se. So that's how much downforce the car creates. Yeah. And here on Donington, we have a lot of corners and shorter straights. So it is okay to go higher downforce. So that's what the question in the really very beginning was questioning or asking. What is high downforce? What is low downforce? It's the rearing and some cars can change the front splitter. This car can. So of course, we're going to use it. Yeah, so now like, we think... are on kind of medium to high downforce setting because rearing eight is at the higher level mm -hmm. and six splitter is at the medium. And uh, I think the AMG plus like the Porsche or like the two Porsches, the Cup and the normal one are the only cars in ACC that can change the front splitter. Also the... the GT4 Porsche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bo okay, cool. So we have like the GT4 Porsche and both GT3 Porsches and the AMG and that's that's pretty cool. And um. Uh, my throttle is not at 100%, it actually should be, maybe that's just, le uh, let's look at that, that maybe it's just like a visual, because the last thing of the throttle there, yeah, might, it might look different, but it should be 100%. So, um, anything else? Question, should anything be changed when the time of the day changes apart from temperatures? Um, apart from temperatures, so brake uh, disc, no, uh, brake cooling, brake ducts, and tire pressures, um... Sometimes you will find the cars very different on 15 degrees to 30 degrees. Yeah, sometimes. Like the situations are that vastly different. Sometimes the car just changes. If that happens, then you will find it out and then you will change it. But it's not some per se change that you can do to make you quicker in night conditions or something. And um, let's actually sw switch to chapter four, which is more adjustments. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Maybe you want to uh, switch on your telemetry labs already? Uh, yeah, I can do so. Good, then let's try again. I think the pressures looked all fine before I spun it. So yeah, again, going with 100 liters fuel, fresh tire set. Um, and let's... Oh yeah, the throttle input looks strange actually. That's right. Let me just quickly check that in the options because yesterday it was fine all right my throttle is not at 100 percent that's cool why is that no idea so that's one of the moments where we just take a short break while i restart the game <laughs> and save actually the setup that's funny why did that change
So uh, we actually now save that as version two because we want to make sure that if something happens, we can go back to it. And I'm now just restarting uh, my game. And while I do that, let's just quickly take a look at my cool shortcut video. Uh, just a short break and be right back. All right, we are starting back up, everyone. Should be fine. Even though I calibrated it, um, looks like Fanatec just thought, hey, let's screw with Bunatix today. <laughs> so now the input should actually be good. But stuff like that can happen. So now we are at 100, nice. Let's just jump back into my server and continue where we left off. One question was, uh, I love the McLaren, but I can't get it to slow down. Help me, masters. <laughs> yeah, McLaren has poor brakes. I mean, it has to, it needs to have something that it can't do well. <laughs> uh, brakes are one part. Maybe no, you can fine. try um, putting the brake bias a bit more to the rear. That's what I found helped me a bit. But it's, it's just a weakness that the car has. It has so many advantages. It's just not good on brakes. So I don't know who it was and who suggested to check the throttle. Thank you so much. Um, you're right, I was not at 100%, so now we will smash lap times. <laughs> Are you on 100% now? Yes, now it looks it correct. like 99%, but... Well, no, no, now it looks correct. Okay, good. Now it's fully green. Full steam space machine. The next... Then I expect your first 28 of the day now. <laughs> so what did we... Let's just uh, quickly re-summarize. What did we now change? We adjusted the front right hit and the splitter, right? Yep. Okay, so again, bring the tires on temperatures in your outlet. Be careful. Yeah, I just want to point out that was uh, that what Thomas said right now is absolutely true. ABS and TC are driving aids. You don't really want them to set up as well set up tools, and that is absolutely true. You want them to work for you if your tires maybe um, start wearing down or if the conditions change and you go into rain. That's what they are for. Um, if you have issues and TC six helps you use it, sure. But we want to create a setup that doesn't rely on driving aids or, well, the overuse of driving aids to be quick because usually the higher you put your TC on dry conditions, the slower you will get. Especially yeah. when you go, like, uh, 2, 3 on some cars, 4, absolutely fine, use it. But above that, you've got to be careful because maybe you're going to slow down yourself um, way more than what could have been avoided if you change the air breeze, the, the wheels, uh, wheel rate, the aero, so many things. The interesting thing is that TC and ABS work differently from car manufacturer to the other. And uh, the, I think the, f the really fun thing is actually that the, the, the Merc TC works so well that you could actually set it to like 5 or 6 in dry conditions and it would only in emergency cases really um, cut the power. So it, it works differently from car to car. But uh, yeah, as yeah. you said, it should only be like really the last resort when you go into rain or damp yep. conditions. I agree with you. The Merc, for example, is really good TC. It's a very modern car, so you can get away with TC4 and drive maybe maybe 5. Um, while other cars, if you're driving an older car, let's take the Nissan, let's take the, uh, the old S, let's take the Jaguar, let's take yeah. everything, that, or actually the NSX as well. Um, 
if you use too high TC or too high ABS, it's going to slow you down. And yeah. as to the question where to begin, well, begin with the aggressive preset. Look at what TC and ABS that's using. And try increasing it by one, decreasing it by one, ABS by one, TC. And see where you get, just experiment with it. like the Aston V12 has TC1 and it still slows you down even though you're so careful on acceleration. What should be my speed sensitivity? That's a that's a good question. That's a steering wheel technical question. And I think Boon made a video about his settings. And I think that's also something that you can Google yourself. That's also dependent on your wheel, I guess. But my rule of thumb uh, when it comes to force feedback and everything is put all these artificial effects to zero and then just um, use the gain for feedback thing to well, see that your force feedback is not too weak or too strong. Okay, first impression is actually that the car feels better and more predictable. And we just actually balance the right head. Still some oversteer out of there, but I guess that's... That was mm. just too quickly and yeah. too hard on the throttle. So that, that's just me. That's good to know. This feels really good there on exit actually. Turn two, turn three, heading into turn four now. Uh, not perfect line, but. Not too much on the inside there. Yeah, a bit too slow. But we're not here for the driving, we're here for the setup. <laughs> Today at least. Not only. <laughs> uh, if you can learn the track and improve on it, just take the opportunity as well. <laughs> yeah, what did you say in the beginning? If you can do it, everyone could do it. Absolutely. Oh, 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 oh it's okay. still a bit too on edge. Seems like it gets a bit unsettled when going over the curbs there. Yeah. We could try changing the ARB. For that once more or we could go into dampers but i think that's an issue that's too big for dampers yeah. right now yeah dampers are a topic for themselves we could fill like a five hour stream a five hour stream just for dampers <laughs> and even Absolutely. then we would still have open questions sometimes i think i apply too much brake pressure how will i know well, first off, if your ABS is constantly yellow, um, that might be too much. But basically what you want to do is, once you go in, or you break in a straight line, you can go 100%. But as soon as you start turning, you want to go off the brake a bit. And that's what we call, tr call trail braking. So basically, the more you turn your steering wheel, the less you want to brake. Because on a fundamental scale, the tire only has 100% of well, trip to give, right? It can only give 100%. And if you brake in a straight line, it 100% of your grip goes into braking. But once you turn in, you can't 100% brake anymore. So if you turn and if you want, for example, 50% of your grip to go into turning, you can only brake by 50%. That's very technical. And I, like, if I'm driving, I don't think, okay, this is a 50% brake corner now. It just something that you try to learn and that you need to practice that you start braking less once you turn in it also comes down to how your brake pedal feels and pedals are a very subjective thing and you know if, if you just you know get an entry level pedal set usually the pedals are very soft and uh, the, the thing you will learn is that the more or the harder a brake pedal is the easier it will be for you to have a feeling for that because your your legs or your feet cannot measure the travel distance or, or like your body can't really tell how much your feet are traveling so it's all about that you know 
improving the feeling for you. So if there's any chance to make your brake pedal a bit stiffer and a bit harder to push, you will have an easier time to like measure the, the brake pressure yourself. It's still oversteering through T4. Hmm. One interesting question. Um, how often do you practice sim racing each week? And how do you go about it? <laughs> I would say... Like, I would... <laughs> I would say I'm advanced. Like I said in the beginning, I have a lot of experience and I basically know how this works. So it depends on the race. On some races where I feel confident or where I don't want to practice that much, I do like two or three hours of practice. Or if there's a big event like a 24 hour race, for example, I spend so many hours, like 10 hours, maybe less, maybe more, just to practice for an important event. Yeah. And how I go about it? Well, I just I just drive. If I work with my team together with my with my team, then maybe we already have a setup, or we need to establish a setup that works for everyone, which is also not easy. If you do like endurance races with multiple drivers, then the setup has to fit for everyone. Jesus. Um. Yeah. And then you just drive. Then and then I just do what we're doing here. Think about tire pressures. I think about the balance of the car. I think about where I can find some more time, what could be an issue for a very long race, for example, where could I get into problems, where could I maybe pass someone, all the minor things. And I found a really interesting question, but I've lost it now. Oh, come on. Ah, damn it. It's now... We've got some light damage on the front of the car. Um, shouldn't you be utilizing engine braking a bit more? Engine braking is something that makes you quicker, but today we're here for the setup. And, yeah. So, yeah, I think tire pressure now was the interesting thing that even before spinning, the rear left was high. going to 28, yeah. Uh, I... So, like, what, three, four clicks down? Two? Not that many, maybe two. So, two clicks. Also the front, or? Yeah, do, like, one click at the front. Okay, so okay, again, and you said yeah. you still have too much oversteer. Yeah, the thing, but only in turn four, and that's really strange. It's like I have a feel, maybe I'm approaching the turn too fast, I'm not sure right now, but every time I, I want to throw it into turn four, it feels like I lose the car. Hmm. Again, there's many ways that we could go about it, but you say the rest of the track is pretty much fine. Except the the assets, the chicane, it's just massively okay. unsettling the car. I have to be really, really careful through there, and I think that is that a just... really, really, really difficult situation to be in because those two corners are vastly different, and yeah. we need to change those without changing too much about the car on other parts of the track. So, so probably, honestly, part of it is actually me, and yeah. part maybe is the car. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um... Let's okay. So one thing that is mostly on the entry of the corner, I would say, is toe in at the front. The toe uh, in. Toe out. Toe out. Toe. Out. At the yeah. front, it's toe out. Yeah. So what we could do is decrease the front toe out, which would make the car less oversteery on turn in. So like by one click. No, I would say like two to three clicks. So let's do three and see what happens. So turf. Yeah. So let just for comparison, like the the rear we have the positive turn in, and on the front we have the negative toe out. Yeah, so, so let's go to yeah, yeah zero we, seven. We decrease that a little bit. And just a minor change, as you're still suffering from oversteer in many cars, mild oversteer, but a bit maybe decrease the rear right height by one click, which would make the car understeer a bit more and less oversteery. Okay, so it went from minus zero point eight to like minus zero point nine. Yeah. That's a minor change. I'm sure out of five or six streams like this, we will all become German diploma engineers. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Also, I, I had a really good question, but I've lost it <laughs> and I want to bring it up. But basically it was among the lines of um, is stability always the way to go? How stable is too stable and so on. So basically what you're trying to do is not be too stable because that's what we call understeer and understeer makes you slow. Oversteer is so what you want to do is be balanced. So be perfect for your personal driving style. In my personal experience, it's okay to have a bit too much oversteer because at least against oversteer, you can do something. You can go on the throttle less, you can steer less. Against understeer, you can't do anything. Yeah. And what you want to do is you want to be as stable as possible, 
without sacrificing too much speed. So for example, if this would be a 20 minute race, I would go for an oversteery setup that is really quick. If this is a 24 hour race, I would go for a more safe setup, which I know will not kill us. <laughs> Even <laughs> if it means sacrificing two or three times a lap. And there's also the difference, I mean, there are people who can really manage and a nervous and oversteer car and I'm not one of these people I just can't manage that I mean uh, so it, it's really a difference for, for for everyone to like how you want to set up your car do you want it like really understeery or do you want it oversteery do you want it more a bit nervous to be able to slide it a bit more and stuff like that so yeah Yeah, what what just guess Rob's just said. Uh, same for me here. I tried copying setups from like the fastest guys and uh, the big guns and the streamers, and it's it's horrible. Uh, it's beyond my understanding how they can drive a car that is so much on edge. But th that just shows you the difference in skill and experience, which is um, totally different. Which is why it's tricky when you are like you have people who are buying setups and. It can work for you, but it also might be really frustrating because you just can't get to grips with the car, but um, that, that's just a decision and a risk you, you have to take. Yeah, it's always a risk versus reward thing. I mean, if you get into like a bit of an experience with setups and you buy some setups, you have really good bases that you can then adjust to like your own li liking. That was again my mistake. But it's cool, tomorrow's community race I will probably pick the AMG and um, it's gonna be fun if I can survive that. Which will be on a totally different track. <laughs> and for me a totally different car. <laughs> <laughs> Which one are you going to pick? The, the Aston V12, right? Yeah, the to really slow, slow you, Aston. To, to try and slow you down. <laughs> also, very simplistic view uh, to TC1, TC2. TC1 in the Ferrari is, and this is in very easy terms, how strong it is, how strong is the TC effect, and TC2 is when does it apply, how early does the TC kick in. Other cars that only have one TC um, don't have adjustments for that. It's basically TC1 applies the least and is also the weakest. So that is like combined, while the Ferrari, yeah. for example, with two TCs has them both, both as usable options. I'm always taking that corner too early. Rubbish racer, good question. How can you determine if the setup is at fault or if it is because I'm just crap? Well, you just try it out with a different setup, I would say. So if you have an issue at the corner, you can compare it to how other people drive it. Maybe read a setup guide or watch a setup guide video. Um, or inform yourself about what you can do in terms of setup. So let's say you have oversteer in the quick corner, then you could change the arrow balance. You could decrease the rear right height or increase the wing. And then you look over the entire lap if it's quicker or slower. Oh, finally nailed it through there. No more oversteering there. I 
I would say someone said um, that uh, Jadia said that it's always the racer, never the car, or 99% the driver. And I don't necessarily agree with that. I mean, you can see it in real racing. Look at a person like... Um, or look at any person. Some people prefer more oversteer, some people prefer more understeer. So I know that Kimi in F1, for example, likes oversteer, while Hamilton is a driver who likes understeer. So if you would give Hamilton oversteer, he would still manage, of course, but he would still lose some time. Yeah. Just because it's not his personal driving style. So I would argue against that, that it's 99% just the driver. If you have an issue with something with the car, why not change the setup? And that's why we are doing this. We are doing this workshop Finally. for drivers. Finally, yeah. Improvement. Yeah, we are doing this for people who are new to this hobby or maybe just medium experienced, just to help them get more comfortable with the car, know what to change if they have an issue. I would argue because to it, say if you are at a level where Charlie is, yes. Yeah. Um. Probably, but as you say, if you give Hamilton a car that's not to his driving style, he will struggle. He will yeah, manage better than anyone Vettel, else. For example, who is a quick guy but can't drive the, couldn't drive the Ferrari because yeah. he had issues with oversteer. Yeah, yeah. So what, what we kind of want to get across is actually that, yes, don't get crazy with the setup, but use it to your advantage in, in a basic way. And that's what we are trying to show you here is that there, there is no shame in just using what the game is offering you to just improve your feeling and enjoy racing even more. <laughs> because we are not on the level of uh, certain aliens competing in championships. <laughs> are we not? <laughs> well, I, well, I'm not, you are maybe, but I want to like really enjoy driving and I don't have time to practice 10 hours a day and I don't get paid for that, so I want to make the most of out of it and if a setup can help me enjoy the game more why not just do it it's part of the game it's part of the experience so how's the car feeling now better i think we come actually to the point where it's just about me <laughs> where there are no excuses <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to push it a bit more now and that means more mistakes actually because yeah But it's not oversteering anymore through T4. It's more predictable through it. Yeah, and what you mean with Jadia, that, that is something that we talked about earlier. Like in the right of the beginning. If you're new to racing, don't go to the web and search for setups or try changing the setup right away. If you're new to the car, to the track or even the game, just drive. Find out how the car reacts. You can't yeah. just do one lap and find, ah yeah, okay, this is more wing, this is more ARB, go. The priority is actually to find a car that you really like and that you enjoy driving. That's the, that's the big priority, actually. Yeah. Because if you do it wrong, or something that even happens to me is, you change so, man so many things about the setup and you go quicker and quicker, and then you just can't get quicker anymore, you go back to one of the original versions of your setup, like the first version, and you're half a second quicker, just because you also get quicker with the car and the track the more you race. Like, if we would give Boone the same setup as we as he had in the beginning, now after 27 laps, of course he would be quicker. <laughs> Obviously. So that's always something to keep in mind. Sometimes you, we have in Germany a very really nice saying for that, we, you verschlimmbesser it. So you make it worse <laughs> by improving it. Yeah. That's why you also save every version that you change. Exactly. That's why I ended up with 20 versions for a Ferrari setup for a six hour race. Oh, no, that was my mistake, see? So, uh, as, as viewers as can see, I'm, I'm far off, uh, like, from uh, being consistent. And, and that's, I think, the, the first struggle people are going to have when driving on a track is, like, to really nail brake markers and turn-ins every lap. So, of course, that, that should always be the focus and that just comes with with the time you practice the more you practice and the more you feel confident the more you enjoy it and the better you get it's all about like really spending the time and the thing is you just 
you just can't catch up with someone like, um, I don't know, like uh, Chadie or Dan Suzuki who have already spent countless years and thousands of hours into the game. You just can't catch up on that. It's impossible. Um, you must be really talented uh, or specially bred alien to do that. <laughs> I yeah. mean, if you watch motorsports, like for example MotoGP, sometimes you know there comes a young guy and he just smashes everyone into the ground because just he has the talent and he had the support from the beginning. But we are drifting off now. <laughs> um, interesting question was, or interesting point of view is, um, that it's really difficult to really decide if you have the time to get to a point where it's enjoyable racing like yeah i guess if you're studying out it can be frustrating yeah but in the end we are here because it's fun and if you're not if you're driving just to get better and not to have fun anymore that's when it gets tricky and that's what i also had in my tie or my eight years so often that i just started to not have fun anymore because when i was just trying to improve when you take it too and serious yeah Exactly, when you take it too seriously. For some people, that's the, their greatest joy in their life, to find that extra 10. But if you get too bitter about it, that's what really took the fun off for me for some time. So that's why you shouldn't really care about your times. Find a place, like a league or online, whatever, where you have people who are on your pace and improve together while having fun. That's also why we are in SXP, for example, I guess, yeah. because this is a place where beginners and intermediates can drive together and learn together while Absolutely. having fun. One of the biggest points is actually, I think, uh, when, when you like look on like sim racing tips for beginners and, and how to be faster, everything is about the driving, you know, it's about how to trail brake and how to find brake markers. But I think one of the most important points as a beginner into sim racing is actually don't compare yourself to, to, to others. Don't look at the times of aliens. Don't don't compare yourself. Don't set it as a goal that you need to reach those times because then it's frustrating from day one. And I really learned that the hard way for myself when I was I started with ACC on Nürburgring track because people told me like it's one of the favorite you know most used tracks. So I need to use it, uh, learn it, and get faster because I will find more races for that track. And um, First of all, I approached it all wrong, but second of all, I was then looking up like track guides and the times of other people and I was like happy with my two minutes something and then I saw people doing 154s, 153s and I was like, what the hell is going on there? I mean, that's not what I signed up for and that's that's just, I couldn't even comprehend what the hell was going on there. So my, my biggest advice to beginners is actually to really not compare yourself, your performance with the so-called aliens it's it's good to like keep an eye on what they are doing the lines they take how they race and you might be able to learn something but you will definitely learn more in an environment with people who are like on the same or a little bit over your own level and yeah, exactly wow. that's the thing you learn best when you're just a, or competing against people or well dealing with issues that are just a bit above your skill level level like I'm, I'm learning to become a teacher, or I'm, I'm a, I am a teacher, and that's also what we learn. You learn best when you have to deal with issues that are just a tiny bit above your skill level. So if, you, if you're studying out or intermediate and then compare yourself to the top drivers out there, you can learn a bit, sure, but it's going to demotivate you, it's going to be too tough, and if you are set on beating that one time that that one guy said, it's going to destroy your, your mental, mentality, right? Yeah. And the thing is, I just, I mean, it's still, uh, uh, it still baffles me when I watch the aliens drive. Is like the points at where they manage to brake and turn in the car and accelerate. I just don't know how they do it. I, I just can't replicate that. And if you just focus on that, it will just keep on frustrating you and take the fun out of sim racing. And that's just, yeah. Oh, not that. <laughs> I just watch. found a really good question in chat. Sorry for interrupting. I thought you were. Yeah, finished. yeah, sure. Go on. Uh, do you always find a good setup for every car on all tracks, or sometimes you struggle and don't know what's happening? I think <laughs> struggling and not really knowing what happens is like 50% of what's happening. <laughs> That's what what happens mostly, I guess. 
I mean, it's pretty easy, or let's say easy for me to find a setup that drives okay. But to find really a good setup, as you say, a good setup for me, that's such a struggle. <laughs> Especially when you go into these events like I, for example, in like top splits of endurance races and so on. You spend so much time just dealing with these issues where you have like 10 ways to fix them, but none are really accurate. So it can be frustrating and that's kind of the fun of it, like solving these issues. I think we get to the point where my concentration is saying bye-bye. Oh. I'll just keep on doing so many stupid mistakes right now. Ah, yes. Maybe this is the time that you actually increase the driving aids. Maybe increase the TC by now, by one click. No. <laughs> because we said earlier, it's about driving assist and maybe you need more assist now. Maybe we just do a, a FAQ break or talk about show the people something else. I don't know. <laughs> Should I drive? <laughs> For a good comparison, I think you are at least two seconds quicker than me right now. Yeah, I just I'm just not sure what setup or what step we are on right now. So maybe I need to compare a bit of things that we did because I kind of yeah. forgot most. I didn't copy them. I mean, probably the setup wouldn't feel the same for you as for me because we know from experience that I prefer cars who are not as on the edge, mm. while you love the oversteer. For some reason, at Silverstone, the lamp, uh, well, the, the wet preset does not grip the track. What do I do? Well, it's wet, I guess, and it's Deep. you're gonna be slower. But uh, in the wet, you always want to run super low spring. So uh, well, they want to run the spring super soft, oh so the God. rear rate to be really soft, and a lot of wing, a lot of rear wing. So maybe if the Silverstone setup is not that way, maybe try that. Also, it's different for every car. Some cars struggle with the wet. There's just nothing that you can do about it. Yeah. Sometimes How the wet... You... Yeah, go on. I had a different question already. Please finish your comment. Yeah, I'm just saying sometimes the wet presets are really tricky because it, it also depends on the wetness of the track. If it's just damp, they don't really work. If it's just pouring down, they also don't really work. And yeah, it's really tricky. How do you know when the front and rear right height are good and not too low or too high. Um, by trying them out. <laughs> by trying out if you can still decrease them and get quicker or if you increase them and you get slower. That's how you find out. But first off, you want to try and find the right balance for you so the car fits good. And then you can still find out if, they're, if the car is too low or too high. Um, but if you like hear some really harsh rambling sounds off the bottom of your car, that's your under tray. That's your car hitting the bottom of the track. That's called bottoming out, and that's what you mostly want to avoid. So on some tracks, you want to run higher right hand. For example, Imola, with all these really high curves, you want to run really high right hand there. And on other tracks, like, <laughs> do you have one, Boon? Maybe, um, maybe Sanford, I guess. No, Sanford is bumpy as well. Like a really flat track. Whew. Maybe Donington. Maybe Nurburgring. Something like that, there you want to have a lower right height. Well, Spa, except Rouge, there's not really much bump, right? Well, on Spa, you want a higher uh, because of oh, Rouge. Oh, yeah, because of Rouge, thing. yeah. Barcelona! Barcelona's a good one. Really smooth, not a lot of curves. There you go with a lower right height. Yeah, and sometimes, as Tristan just said, don't shy away from trying anything out because you can't break anything in the game. For example, if you just feel in the mood, just stiffen up your front and rear ARB, ARB or just, you know, decrease and increase the rear right aid or front right aid by six, seven, eight clicks, you will immediately feel it in the first few corners. And if you just find one extreme, you can always, you know, then go step by step back and make it better. Someone asked if the tune is available at the end of the stream. I would say, yeah. yes, you can well, we make it share official the setup. in Discord. In my Discord as well. So um, all the setups that we come up with will be shared in the Discord. And everything about the stream, all the questions, jump into the Discord. 
Uh, someone said something interesting. Snedderton is flat. And mm. I agree, yes, Snedderton is flat. But Snedderton has um, a lot of runoff that you use to be quick. So and you have to drive over a lot of curves at the exit. And it's very bumpy there. So for the Ferrari setup, for example, that we used, we had to increase the right height. Because otherwise we would bottom out on the exit of, well, some corners. Can you learn from racing the AI? I mean, certainly you can. Yes. But yes. Um, on some tracks they are really awkward. So, for example, Kialami. So I race, I race against the AI on the highest level, and on some corners they are unrealistically quick. So, for <laughs> example, the hairpin of Kialami, they can do 50 kilometers more than real people do. So you can learn, but with caution. <laughs> what you can Especially learn the lower, is... The lower your skill level, the more you can learn from them. What you can learn is driving in traffic. Even though the AI is a bit predictable, the faster you become, but you can learn driving in traffic, keeping your distance, see how close you can get to uh, another car and stuff like that. Okay, someone is asking the question of the Holy Grail, asking about dampers. <laughs> Do you have to modify bump and rebound together? You modify them not together, but in consideration of each other. Like, if you modify them, you're mostly working with Motec, and you're working with this one graph. I'm not sure if you're gonna get there today, maybe on the next stream, but you don't need to modify them together, but you can. It depends on what you wanna achieve. Will you share all the versions of the setups so this video can be seen and set up sure. and tested? Sure. I don't think we have all of them. I think we only have one I version now. Or do I we have saved many? all setup versions. Nice. Then we can actually save all of them. And, and you also, can try out for yourself. Yeah. And also, I prepared the setup for myself in, well, practicing for the stream. And I can also give you guys that if you're interested in that. We will share everything. So jump into my Discord and to everyone watching who hasn't done it so far. Uh, I would really appreciate if you follow the channel for the next upcoming live workshops and live streams and tutorial videos. A uh, bunch of new projects are coming up, so don't miss out on that. And if you enjoy the live workshop, you know the drill. Click some thumbs up. <laughs> so I think... I don't know, I don't want to call it a day, but I definitely can't improve right now. I have to say the car feels much, much more stable. But I have a really hard time right now to keep pushing it. And uh, th that's the reason if you keep on driving for like one, two, three hours, it's it's only natural that your concentration starts to wear off because there's mm. so much going on. So you either Ding. take a break or you try the, another day. And I think what we're going to do is... I will pit now and then we will switch to Tristan and Tristan can show us a bit um, what he Maybe may you change. Can send me the setup that you have right now. Yeah, I'll and send I it. can just take over and talk about it. But Boone, yeah. what is your dream car? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, like in general? Because Jesus, that list is long, but from yes. <laughs> the first car that springs to my mind is like a 69 Mach 1, something along these lines. I love old muscle cars. Mm. So it's like either like a 69 Mustang or like a Dodge Challenger or something like that. The question and for me is, does he mean like an affordable dream car? One that we can maybe even afford? Or is it like one out of the world dream car? <laughs> <laughs> what dream car means like whatever. <laughs> I mean dream 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 car would be a, an Enzo Ferrari or a F40 Ferrari I guess for me. But okay. maybe a fo more affordable would maybe a Corvette C5 or a Mazda X8, something like that. Yeah, a uh, Mazda <laughs> RX-7. Uh, I just watched like a, a motor channel, a German one, JP Performance, and he's working on a Mazda RX-7 right now. It's just, wow, I love that car. But if you would ask me, I would really love to get more into like American muscle cars and classic cars and just spend my days working on them. Yeah, that would but be that's nice. that's that's uh, that, that's a story for when I'm old and have all the money I need. It's so easy. Will... You just need to win the lottery, right? <laughs> yeah, it's so easy. Just win the lottery. <laughs> so I must send you the setup right now. Did I already race in a real car? Well, I, I own a BW Polo 1.4 liter TDI. 
No TDI, I don't know. <laughs> it makes 60 horsepower. <laughs> Dude. That's a good... <laughs> I can race that whenever I want. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's there to get you from A to B. That's enough already on our exactly. roads. Just, but no, just... sadly, apart from karting, I was not fortunate enough to be born into a rich family that could afford sending me to doing marzipan <laughs> things. Sent you the setup? Yep, I'm putting... Oh, no, I, I need to rephrase that. <laughs> Before I speak that out. <laughs> okay. Um, Got it. Nice. So now we are watching Tristan. Let's see what he says. Because he's a bit to of... get a... back into the seat. <laughs> and put the gloves on. What's the most difficult car to set up in game? I would actually say the Porsche, maybe. Yeah, I would say the Porsche as well. Because the Porsche has a very extreme fuel tank. Um, and what that means is it changes its balance depending on how much fuel you have in it. It might feel fine for you with 60 liters, but with 30 liters or 90 liters, it might feel completely different. Hmm. So let's see what kind of setup we made for you now. There are now no excuses if you screw that up. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> But I can immediately see that from the oh, point this on. Is under -steery. Now it's now it's too understeery, right? I thought so. I mean, it's tire pressure as well. I can only tell you in like two laps or so. It's just different from what I'm used to. Also, we didn't change the brake bias, and I think I will do that as the first thing. Yeah, because why? It feels understeery when braking into a corner, which is something I usually do. I. Well, that's something that you want to do if you want to go quick. You break into a corner, and on corner entry on brakes, I feel understeer. So what I do is I decrease the brake bias by 1%, which is already quite an extreme change. But I'm going to try that out. Okay. So you moved it more to the rear right now, yes? Yes, by 1%. Benji wants to know if your polo setup is like uh, you can share the setup for your Volkswagen Polo. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much I could share there. It has an engine warning light blinking at the moment, so maybe don't share it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do you know when the right hit is too low or too high? So Tristan already talked about that. It's basically when you hear the car bottoming out, like scratching around the tarmac, it's um, definitely too low. And uh, that's the case for like bumpy tracks. Um, like, uh, what did we say were the bumpy tracks? <laughs> bumpy tracks are Imola because of the high curbs. Uh, yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho! I can't push it the way that I would like it to. This is a case of the car is too stable for me. Yeah. That we talked about earlier. I want to push it and the front end just says, nope. Oh. Yeah, and this Bitex just said we can agree that changing the setup won't shave off 5 to 10 seconds. No, definitely no. not. But it can help you um, improve your confidence and improve your feeling. And I think we always talk about, yeah, of, of course we always talk about time because we want to get where the, the fast guys are. but. I don't know, maybe I'm approaching it a bit different. I just I just want to like enjoy racing and I want to find a balance in the car where I can enjoy the race. And if that means that I'm five seconds off the pace of uh, whatever alien we're talking about, that's okay for me because I know that I will probably never get to that pace. And I think most of us will never get to that pace. And that's why it's so important to find a community and a league where you can race in with people who are maybe at your level or, or a bit higher level. But of, of course, I also understand that not everyone has the same ambitions. Somebody wants to be really fast and compete on the top level. So, um, but I think then the approach would also be a different one. And what I want to achieve is actually make setting up a car a bit more accessible and also a bit more acceptable by by the uh, beginner, let's say, by, by the community in general. And but for sure, the focus should always be on finding the car you enjoy driving and on practicing the tracks and learning the tracks and get better there and don't use the setup as an excuse that that should never be the case i want to point out one more thing that we didn't talk about yet about setups yeah because 
I know that so many people just go online and download the setup and go with it. Yeah. And right now you can see exactly why that is not always a good idea. Because a setup that was quick for you and felt really good for you, look at what's, what it's happening or what it's doing to me. Like the, yeah. on the top left you see the data to my own time, not to Boon's time. That is my own best time. And see I'm losing a second minimum yeah. just be because be of a setup which felt good yeah. to him. Which was awesome for him, but for me it does not work. And that's also the thing that maybe for me, I think, of course, you can change and adapt your driving style because not necessarily the like driving style is always the best or the fastest, but I do know that I have not been taken every corner perfectly, far away from perfectly. So, um, yeah, there, there is definitely more time for me to gain um, on this track. Maybe next time we try something like Kailami where I feel more comfortable, but we, we wanted to show you what's happening on a new track. Rubbish Racer, you're not the first guy who asks me if I am related to Toto Wolf. <laughs> I sound just like Toto now Wolf. Now that you say it, you actually sound really like him. Well, I think... I don't know if I, if I want to sound more like Toto Wolf or more like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think I go for Toto Wolf as well. He's such a cool guy, actually. But thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Toto Wolf is an awesome guy. <laughs> Tristan wishes he wasn't a polo. <laughs> Yeah, Tristan, let's get that polo. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nevertheless interesting to see how you try to adapt to the car. Yeah. Uh, depending, you, you, if you look back at two laps early and what you're doing now, um, it looks more controlled. Yeah, I need to slow down with my driving because the car won't accept quick changes. You know, guys, I just did that on purpose. We just developed the setup so Tristan is impossibly going faster. Maybe uh, Tristan, I'll give you a SMB12 setup for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just take your Merc setup and drive with that instead of CB12? <laughs> Absolutely. So this is the case where the car is just too understeer everywhere for me. Yeah. So this is the case where, uh, where you could increase the rear right height or well change the arrow platform yeah because that affects everything mostly high downforce but most but also everything uh captain horlicks yes i know the the, the cs elite or the club spot v3 pedals with the vibration motors don't work in acc unfortunately but i think there is like an option on the wheelbase the brake level or something i think there is a way to get it to vibrate although i actually unplugged the little motors because I don't I don't know I kind of don't need it just think the pedals are really cool without it so the struggle is I want to drive on a new track unless I've watched 10 track guide videos and remember every corner speed and breakpoint okay so <laughs> you watch more videos than you actually drive send help um, that's tricky by text that's really tricky I'm um, just drive more <laughs> yeah, exactly. but, just have fun <laughs> uh, yeah it's it's uh, I know there are different approaches to sim racing and somebody, who was it? Was it a video from Boosted Media? I don't know, I just saw a cool video where they talked about there are different kinds of people and if you throw them together into like a league race, you will be in for some troubles because you have people who are just racing for the fun of it. Then you have the other ones who are really taking this very, very serious, very, very serious. And then you just have the in-betweeners who go for the immersion and for the experience. And if you put these three types of people into a league race, you have like a boiling... Mess. Yeah, mess, exactly. Jesus, my English is on spot tonight. <laughs> Toto Wolf is having <laughs> troubles. Oh, look, you're getting faster, dude. Yeah, and I'm this adjusting is... my driving to the car. And this is one incredible treat to actually see how an experienced driver and like comparison to myself can adjust to a car he actually doesn't like <laughs> and that's just incredible I, I i i i'm so baffled when i see people jumping into like a setup with a car that feels to me horrible to drive and i just i actually don't want to adapt to it and i'm pretty sure i even can't adapt to it but you just do the opposite you get into the car and you find out how it works and you just uh, improve your times it's uh, it's brilliant to watch actually I just had uh, tire wave pressure pressure loss at the right rear. 
actually. Oh, because you went off track so much, yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I was so quick and now I lost all that in the final sector. <laughs> hey Björn, how are you doing? Uh. Yeah. Yeah, now we know how to bring Tristan back to the pack of my community races. We give him, we <laughs> give him, setup. <laughs> we give him safe, we give him actually the safe preset setup. <laughs> 120 plus likes on the stream. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. If you have not subscribed so far, click the subscribe button to not miss the next workshop. So I think we will do another workshop with Tristan, maybe getting more deeper into like a uh, suspension and motec but um we might have to do that with you tristan driving because i don't think i'm really getting to the limit with the car to adapt dampeners <laughs> yeah damping is also so difficult to explain because it's like it's easy to explain in principle but really getting it is like finding the holy grail yeah i think what might be more interesting to people is actually how to use motec as a beginner to find out what you are doing wrong and where you can improve in terms of like braking, accelerating and stuff like that. I think, uh, I don't know about you in chat, but maybe that would be interesting how to how to use tools like that if you're just starting out and to see the differences. Bytex needs to relax and just drive. Absolutely. Sometimes you just need to take the car for a spin. Like sometimes you need to just jump into the polo and take it for a spin. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see you spin a polo. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do is now revert that toe change at the front. Okay. And increase the rear right height by two clicks. Okay. And you will see that will already be a lot quicker. So let's see what Tristan can do now with the setup changes. I don't expect it to be as quick as the one that I did previously. But it will be better. Stessy is asking if you, rely, if you always rely on Motec for dampeners. You probably have to, right? Um, some things you can feel, like if you have that issue where you're just having issues like at the exit of a corner or on the entry of a corner, then that's something that you can fix by purely adjusting the dampers. Mm -hmm. But there is a mathematically correct damper setting for every car on every track. And you can get to that mathematically correct setting with MoTeC. The thing is, just because it's mathematically correct doesn't mean it's the best for you as a driver. And okay. that's always the tricky bit. So I use Motec, but in moderation. So if Motec tells me you need more bump at the front, then I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to check, is this better for me? Is it quicker? Is it slower? If it is slower, why is it slower? Is Motec telling me I did too much or is something else wrong now? So I use it to improve myself just because it's very quick. So like for me, if I'm preparing for a league race and I have so many things on my mind and it's, I have so much to do in my life. I can just look at Motec and see for myself, okay, dampening looks okay, one more click here, two more clicks there, and then okay. dampers are set. Uh, Frank is asking why you did not change the front back instead of the rear right head, or like generally... Because we had that issue in turn four where the front got too low so that we had that oversteer moment. And okay, yeah. to have the car more under control in that corner, I made the rear, or I increased the rear right height. So this corner that's coming up here is easier for me. Because I don't want this to dip too low. Okay, yeah. It's already uh, getting better and better for you. Looked at iRacing and don't want to pay a monthly price. Well, it's not only the monthly price with iRacing, unfortunately. You have to buy everything extra. That's what's also keeping me from the game and... I yeah, think in terms of Sorry. tire tire models and physics, I th or, or at least I think tire models, it's not on the same level as ACC. Yeah, I agree with you for the most part. I mean, I would love to drive like Le Mans prototypes and try out something different, but I don't want to spend a lot of money and then maybe not enjoy it or something. So that's, you know, with the time we have and GT racing is, I love GT racing. Uh, I'm just gonna stick with ACC for now. Also, one thing that's annoying about iRacing is, for me, that the setup mostly doesn't make sense. So in okay. iRacing, there are certain, let's say, hacks that make you quicker, like minimum tire pressure and this and that. 
that only the experts really know. In ACC, I feel like everything makes makes sense. There is not really, or at least I'm not aware of, big hacks that you can do that make it quicker, you know? Like in r mm. 2, like with the minimum rear downforce and so on. Yeah. And you need to pay, in everything to be quick, you really need to pay for setups. In ACC, in my opinion, you can get there yourself. But in iRacing, to be there, you need to buy these setups, and that is what's grinding my gears. Yeah. I on, don't only need to pay for iRacing, for the car, for the track, but to be able to compete on the level of others, I need to pay as well. Too much pain. You could say you have to pay to win, and that's, I think, an approach that's not really liked by the gaming community a lot, actually. No. Benji, first... Oh, yeah, you have your first solo endurance coming up. Good luck with that, mate. I hope you enjoy. Oh, I'm on best time. Of course, actually. I'm getting close to it. But I... The, the biggest difference I see from you to me is actually how you... St you steer more. Or basically you steer more radical than I do. Through the chicane, for example, you really throw in the car a lot, actually. Yeah. I know the limit of the car better. Yeah. I've never driven the AMG Evo since four months, I think. So for, for me, even though with like 800 hours now in ACC, I still think of myself as more of a, like a, like an experienced beginner, probably. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to call myself a beginner because I think far, far away from that. But I still can't adapt to cars. It's, it's like I jump into a car I haven't driven for months and either it works or it doesn't work. Um, it was like the, at our six hour endurance race in Snetterton with the Ferrari where I was just like struggling through my double stint. It was crazy. Even though the practice felt really good, in the, in the race itself I just couldn't get into any rhythm and yeah. Oh, and someone said I bought the Bentley setup or so from someone and I'm not saying that is wrong. No, because no, no. you also always need to like have a calculation in your mind. If I spend an hour on the setup, what could I do with this hour? Is this worth it for me, for example? For me, creating a setup is the best thing. Like that's what I enjoy most. It's that's not part racing, of the it's not qualifying, yeah. it's setting up the car and practicing. So for me it's good. But I also had someone who paid me to create a setup for me because he said I have so much work at the moment. I would rather give you some money so you can buy a nice lunch. And you do a nice setup because I know I can trust your setups. So I absolutely get that as I throw this lap time away. Oh. Actually? But, uh, close, close. Uh, you might need some little bit more adjustments, but it's, it's, it's incredible to watch you drive. But, but yeah, the thing is that if you buy a setup, it can work out or it won't work out and the thing is if it yeah. does not work out and you can't then get to grips screwed. with it and you don't know what to do then you basically threw away the money but i think for many people it will be a good point to, if they do that because they just can't understand or don't want to spend the time on learning and everything so i totally understand uh buying setups so there there is no like i'm not saying no and i'm not saying yes I think everybody needs to decide for himself. So, um, exactly. I had the chance to try setups from uh, the different. Um, I don't want to say any names here to just keep it neutral. So, usually setups that you buy, I had the chance for some to give them a try, and some were f incredible, where I could shave off a second or even two seconds of my personal best on a track, and and be because I just felt so good in the car. And on other tracks, it was just horrible. I just the car was just sliding around. I was not being. I, I just couldn't feel confident. So uh, that, that that's always the the tricky part with that. So yeah. But I honestly have to say, the the uh, the, the few people or companies who are offering ACC setups, I think have really reasonable prices. I I don't know i racing prices and stuff, but if you buy like packages. I think the prices are really, really fair. If you stick to one car, if you're not sticking to one car, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you also get lucky with setups on YouTube, uh, but but it's it feels like a lottery, honestly, um, because you you see the guy driving on the YouTube video and they think like, wow, that looks insane, and then you you take the setup and you're like, how the hell was he able to drive that car? Feels like shit. <laughs> so are you changing anything or? 
I'm thinking about what I can do because on some corners the rear is too aggressive. Yeah. And I think my best bet would be to change the differential alongside with the toe again. But I'm still I'm still thinking about it. This yeah, is a kind of case that we talked about earlier. I know something is wrong and I do not know how to fix it. <laughs> that that's where you just keep on experimenting and uh, I think that's one of the that that's not happening on on all the tracks i think some tracks like donington where you have so many different speed corners it's really tricky to find the balance there yep yeah and aceto corsa and now the new aceto corsa competition are completely different i think oh yeah you, you can't even really compare the physics there anymore what can you even sorry what can you see when you like are on my Telemetry, can you see my the throttle brake and gearing yeah, yeah, and I RPM, see, right? I see everything except the Can tires. you also see my fuel consumption for that? No. Ah, okay. Because that would have, would have been fun to compare whether uh, the you brake consume balance more fuel or I do. Jump to 60% again, right? Yeah, I'm at 60.0 now. We were okay. at 60.6 uh, when you drove. So what I did now is I changed the toe at the rear to be more understeery. So I increased the rear toe. I decreased the differential to have a bit more turning during the corner. And I increased the front splitter by one click because I feel like the car could benefit from a bit more downforce at the front. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that the way you're taking this setup would also work for me if I have more time to adapt. But my challenge is always I guess I need more time to adapt to stuff. <laughs> and uh, I will share all these setup versions and also Tristan's setup versions in my Discord. And Nightbot already posted that, so that's nice by him. <laughs> I still see people, like always when I see people talking about Porsche, there's that one category of drivers that is smaller that absolutely love it. Yeah. And I belong to that category. I think it's my favorite car, my best car. And then there's this way bigger category or community of people who don't get to grips of it. Yeah, because, because it's, it's that aggressive. Yeah, and you really have to be able to kind of handle that, I think. Yeah. And that just that's just the best argument that of course oh. you can whoa. Of Sorry. course you can learn how to drive the car. But uh, driving style and driving preference is a thing and that's why I said in my beginner uh, video series find the car that really you want to drive that you like but also feels good for you. If you just want to drive a car because it looks good but you hate it when you drive it it doesn't make any sense at all and that was actually the case for me with the, um, with the Lamborghini. I love how the Lamborghini looks and sounds but I just hate how it drives. <laughs> I mean, maybe it would be a different thing now after a few months of not driving it, but yeah. Sometimes it's, it's the McLaren. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I it's like also. It. I want to love it. Yeah, but you can't drive it, right? But you were lightning fast, as, uh, so no excuses there for you, man. <laughs> you hate the car and you're even fast with it, so. <laughs> okay, that was a personal fastest lap. Nice. Yeah, if you watch Niels now, Yoke's drive, he's he's well, he's on another level. I most of the time I can't even comprehend what he's doing. It's just amazing. It looks like magic sometimes. Also, if you look at his pedal inputs and stuff like that, there's so much you can do to balance a car with brake and and power, and that's something yeah, I probably, just yeah, yeah th that's one of the biggest challenges for me at that yeah. point right now, actually. Because at that point where I am, I know how to steer. And I mostly just bent the car through throttle input or brake input on the entry. Yeah. I don't really steer with the steering that much. Like, I just keep it nice and tidy with the wheel. I try yeah. not to wiggle too much. Because that's something that I see for you, Boon. That on the entry of corners, you wiggle left, right, left, right. And yeah, because I don't. Yeah, I don't nail the turn in. And that's just practice, yeah. Hey, Bytex, thank you so much. Yes, we will be doing way more than that. 
than that. I think somebody already requested if we could do more like a video about like breaking, how to learn maybe trail breaking or breaking in general. I think that's a cool idea because we can use Motic for that. And uh, um, I think so. one uh, one track where you can really learn that is uh, Suzuka, I think. Yeah. With T1 and 2, with Spoon. Jesus, T1, yeah. With the Dagners. Yeah, absolutely. This this track is a perfect trail breaking track, actually. Bytex says you wiggle a lot on the exit of current turns. Yeah, that's something because. I, oh yeah, I'm wiggle, quite, wiggle, wiggle. I'm not quite <laughs> happy with how the Merc handles yet, especially yeah. at the exit. I'm not used to it. Uh, but that's, that's the tricky thing with the balance. If you think a car is too oversteering at the corner exit and you make it less oversteering, it can then be that it's understeering on corner entry. And so, mm. so yeah, th this is the balance you're trying to find right now. So anything exactly. you would change right now? This is so. actually the point where I would go into MoTeC. Okay. But yeah, I don't know if we want to tap into that. Um, Probably not. Yeah, I think it's getting probably a bit too much for today. Uh, but I would definitely love to like make a, a part two where we look uh, more into into Motic and what's going on. I think, uh, well, at least I hope that these two hours that we did like uh, were a good indicator for for the people, um, especially in the beginning where we set the focus on tire pressures and what the tires are doing and the temperatures and and all of that. Yeah, today was mostly aimed at beginners and intermediates. We will get into the more expert part later, I guess. <laughs> I sent <laughs> you the setups, by the way, so you can share them. Awesome, cool. So we will put everything in the Discord um, and share it with you guys. And um, yeah, I mean, we had so many cool questions today and I it just shows you how, um, how to say that, how... Uh, I don't even remember the German word right now if I want to say how controversial. Yeah, that that's the thing. How how actually controversial the setup topic is and how like how 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 big the interest is there. So that's that's really cool to see. And um we will definitely continue this workshop series. And um I just want to like the summary for me is like that I think that Merc is not the car for me. And, and not for me. Yeah, I think uh, for me the, the, the bigger challenge than for Tristan is actually to make it work with a setup when you're not feeling good in a car. And uh, you can only do so much there. But um, we saw the difference right now. And I think it was really cool to see you drive with my setup, how you were actually struggling and, yeah, and uh, the I other way around. And yeah, so uh, for everyone who has been uh, watching so far, I really hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, I really hope you want to subscribe for more. Uh, do not miss the upcoming live streams. Tomorrow is the community race happening at Imola, where I will again give the AMG another chance and see what I can do there with the car. Uh, Tristan will drive in the Aston V12 because we want to slow him down, but I'm really pretty much sure it, it won't work. You will be still fast. And I love the car, by the way. It's just so tricky yeah. to drive. In practice, I already did a 42 or 41 high, so I think oh, I'm going to be on God. pace with the others. Uh, yeah, with the other aliens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just one uh, thing that I read in chat. Uh, I think someone said that I maybe have a direct drive wheel, and I wish I had one. But no. I'm just driving with the same setup as Boone has, but just on my yeah. desk. I'm it's absolutely just on my the desk. same. <laughs> absolutely the same. The CSL Elite wheelbase, the McLaren GT3 version 2, and the Club Spot with three pedals. We have the same hardware so hardware is never actually really an excuse um we we even <laughs> see people like amir hosseini i don't know if you know the guy racing with like a, a broken g27 or something in his uh, living room chair at a wooden yeah. desk with a tiny screen so for some people hardware really is not the issue and um lots of people have been in the chat lots of positive feedback for you tristan uh for for us for the stream so yeah just, thank you just, so much i just want to say if if the guys in chat are happy already, imagine how happy we are that this like beginner of a, maybe a series or something. Absolutely. That you liked it that much. We're, I think I speak for both of us, at least for myself, certainly. 
I'm really happy that you guys liked I just, it. I, I hope just, we could yeah. really help you, even if some informations were not 100% spot on. Yeah, for not... me, it's just yeah. so much fun because I know that I'm still struggling with putting the theory into action. And I think that just really just takes time to practice and practice and practice. Yeah. But even it shows just like after two hours, I'm just like concentration fades off. And, and, and that's the thing. So uh, I love to chat about the theory and, you know, uh, practice and and get the theory across to other people and just you know help everyone out so so that, that's what, what really where the passion actually for sim racing comes through here and uh, we will definitely continue i think the setup series and uh, i think it's cool to just do it more often and maybe with different cars and see also how different the outcomes can be if i don't feel so good in the amg and the setup can't really make a lot of difference for me how will it be in like i don't know mclaren lamborghini or whatever other car we can find um we can also like maybe do another uh, where we focus more on the GT4s and talk about differences GT4 to GT3 and how many uh, setup options you have there and stuff like yeah. that. So, sure. so much to do. And uh, thank you all so much for the positive feedback. Uh, I hope I'll see you in the Discord where I share these setups. And um, yeah, I I enjoyed it very much. Um, any anything anything else you would like to add, Tristan? I don't have really a lot to add. Just thanks guys for being here. <laughs> really meant a lot to me i've never i mean i do stream sometimes but never for that many people so it was stressful for me i glad everything worked and i glad you guys liked it <laughs> you, so you hope did to see it. you guys on track and see you improve you did it really well thank you so much for your time tristan and i'm really looking forward to to the next live stream so all there is to say for me is like thank you really so much uh, all time live stream viewer record tonight i hope uh, the community keeps on growing we have so many people in here already in the chat. Thanks everyone for helping asking the questions. My moderator team did an amazing job. So round of applause for uh, the brilliant, brilliant moderators in the chat. Thank you so much. And I love to see how the people are all coming together, answering the questions, um, helping each other out. That It's really brilliant to see that we are establishing and growing into a community where everyone is like, you know, someone knows something the other person doesn't know and where everyone helps each other out. And, I think that's so important in times like these where we just need to take care of each other watch out for each other support each other i mean um th if this is not the time you know wh when is it so um again thank you all so much remember to stay safe and hopefully i'll see a bunch of you guys tomorrow for the community race or uh one of the next live streams and uh actually on on sunday and tuesday i have sim racing xp coming up really cool racing league i enjoy racing in with a gt4 the only mixed league so have a good night everyone take care stay safe and uh, thank you so much for watching i'll see you soon